Hi Virgo, this is your December love reading. It's for Virgo um, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. This is also if you're spying on a Virgo, if you want to know what's up in their love life. So here we go. Virgo, in December, what's going on overall as far as your theme? And we get you might be a little bit bummed out. Why? Well, because for many of you, it's like the long-term plans that you had for your life, you know, whether that was recently or whether it was just like this childhood idea that you had of how your life would be. It doesn't look like things are going exactly the way that you wanted. So this could be in terms of um, career, for sure, because it's pentacles. You know, like at this point in my life, I thought I'd have more money put away for retirement. I thought I'd be a homeowner. Um, but it could also be in regards to family. You know, I thought I would be married by now and I would have children, things like that. Or, you know, I thought that I would be married and have children, but these children would be ambitious and maybe they're more like the creative artsy type. So it's just like things didn't end up to be exactly the um, picture perfect idea that you had, at least not right now. Okay. Um, so how are we going to resolve that kind of energy and turn it around, and they say, you know what, time is gonna pass no matter what. So if you can find ideas to try to achieve that which it is, you know, that would be more aligned with your picture perfect outcome, start to really think about those things. Like, what are you passionate about? Maybe you thought like, okay, well, the way to build this kind of a life would was to be a doctor, right? And now I'm a doctor and I hate it. I just hate it. Um, so they're like, where's your passion though? Because that's not the only way, you know, maybe culturally you believe that that was the best way to get there, but maybe there are alternative routes. I mean, where I grew up, I worked at a gas station when I was younger, when I was in high school, and there was a guy who was building a house, and he would come to the gas station all the time to get propane to build this house. Now, this house is like millions of dollars, and the reason um, why he had these millions of dollars is because he invented the little sticky... Um, label thing on the side of medicine bottles where it like expands and then it gives you all the information about like your Tylenol or something like that. Millions of dollars for that one idea. So I mean most people don't grow up saying you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna be an inventor. It's more a happenstance. It's like you have this brilliant idea, this passion you want to follow, you follow it through and poof because that's how you're in alignment with who you are, what your sole purpose is if that makes sense. Now, I know this is about love, but for a lot of us, our picture perfect outcome does involve somebody else. So whether you're coupled or single, you know, it might not be exactly the way that you pictured it. And so that's kind of bringing you down. But if you can instill new and exciting ideas into this, like, into this um, circumstance, whether that's like, you know, if you're already coupled, going on um, a different kind of date than usual. You always see a movie. Well, you don't talk a lot, right, in a movie. So, you know, you go on a hike or something where you can communicate. Um, anyway, <laughs> that could also be um, trying a new way of dating. Maybe it's speed dating. Maybe it's online dating. Maybe it's, you know, getting set up by a friend. That sort of a thing here. Okay, so what is generally working for you in your favor um, per the universe or astrologically in the month of December to help you find what you're looking for. And they're like, well, for this month, a lot of people just have that person coming towards them, like offering love. So whether that makes you more attractive this month or not isn't exactly clear yet, but what it's saying is there are lots of people out there who desire to give you this big cup of love right? But they're a little bit careful about it. Because if this horse goes too fast, the love spills over, right? And then they seem a little bit crazy. Um, so they're being very cautious in their approach to you with offering love. Now, why are they being cautious in their approach? What kind of vibes are you putting out there? And they're like, well, they can tell that maybe you're bummed out, right? And so you have to be very cognizant of this energy this month, when it's the same as that card here saying like, you know what, you're focusing a little bit on the negative as opposed to the positives. So if you're upset that you're not already, you know, married and with children and all of these things, they're like, focus on the positive aspect that you're not married to some total asshole and you have kids, which makes it a very challenging situation to leave when you're feeling tortured in that. Focus on the fact that you didn't couple up 
with the wrong person forever, right? There's always a silver lining. Focus on that positive thing because these two cups indicates a soulmate relationship and you're turning your back on it by focusing on what you don't have. Here comes this guy, that knight of cups, right? With this love to offer you, but it's like you don't even see it and you're giving out this vibe that you don't even want it, that you'd rather just live in your misery. So in this month, you really need to like notice where is this happening? For some of you, this is going to be like very, very much a thing, right? Whether you're self-aware or not. For others of you, it might just be the slightest little tweak. A good example is I was cleaning my house the other day and out of nowhere, Spirit brought me this message about one of my best friends. And um, she's going through a divorce right now. She's a single mom. And the message was that I needed to tell her to stop saying I'm a single mom when she's talking to people. You know, well, like, hey, do you want to go out? Do you want to blah, blah, blah? And she's like, well, I'm a single mom. So, you know, it's like she needs to make sure before she goes on dates with people that, you know, A, they're okay dating somebody who has kids, B, that they're understanding that her time is a little bit limited, um, you know, C, the struggles involved with that, like with time management, like it's takes a lot of planning for her to be able to go out, things like that. So um, the point that I'm trying to get at, though, is when we're saying things like, I'm a single mom, those words that we speak, those things that we think, everything like that goes out to the universe, right? And then the universe is obedient and it brings us back that reality. So if she does want to remarry at some point and she keeps putting out this idea that I'm a single mom, I'm a single mom, well, it's almost like an ask that no one will help her, that she will stay in that reality. And so it could be something little like that that you need to tweak because this is a large variety of um, Virgos watching this. I think last month there were like 7,000 of you that watched the Virgo video. So um, obviously with that many people, it's going to be some of you have a minor tweak you need to make, figure out like where are your ideas and your belief systems limiting you as opposed to like what you're expecting, right? Um, but then others of you are going to have this very large kind of thing um, where it's like, oh man, I really, really need to shift my focus away from, you know, all this misery and tragedy that I'm looking at and um, more focused on what I do want. So what are the challenges that you'll be facing aside from that in this month? And I get two things here. Um, figuring out that actual purpose and then speaking it into reality. Like, what are the things that I'm excited about? What would bring me a lot of joy? What would make me, you know, really passionate and enthused and full of energy and then speaking those into reality? So, you know, for example, in, um, not her, but in general, like in the case of a single mom, you might say, you know what, it's a lot of work to try to balance out my time between work and my child and, you know, trying to date. Okay, well, if we're going to live in that mindset, that's the reality we're speaking. It's always going to be a challenge then if we're going to frame it that way. But if you could say, I'm excited to find, um, how, how, how could you phrase this? I'm excited to find fun and easy opportunities to meet new people, okay? Things like that. Because if you put that enthusiasm and you speak it out into the universe, then it has to come back. The universe is obedient, right? Okay, so what is the best way to come out of the challenges that we will be facing in this month? Whoa. And they're like, you know what? Some of you are going to have to just kind of like emotionally move on from people and things in the past that you cared very much about. You just have to be more excited about the new welcome, like the awesome blessings that are coming in than what, where we're at right now. Even if you're not one of those who are totally, totally bummed out, um, just like maybe moderately slow or slightly so about what you don't have, you have to really just kind of face these emotions within the month of December and move past it. Your intuition is going to lead you, it's going to guide you, and it will make you more happy. Okay, now I want to look at what fell on the floor here. And what they're saying are two things. Um, things will happen quickly for you, okay? They're just like, boom, overnight when you really embrace this mindset. But if you do not, they're not going to change. And so this energy of feeling kind of sad and bummed out about what we don't have, by focusing on our lack, we're just perpetuating that lack. So they're just kind of reiterating things here. And then um, 
they also wanted to say that this is a very spiritual month for you. This is a month where you're super connected to spirit, to God, the universal law, whatever it is that you believe in. Um, and it does require patience, unfortunately, right? Um, they say that maybe some of you are a little bit afraid to get yourself out there, to really um, offer you know, yourself out there to be vulnerable, to say, you know what, I want to give this relationship another try, or I want to give dating another try. You might be hesitant to do that, but if you don't do it, you'll never know. Yeah. Um, they're saying, okay, so maybe you have to kiss a few toads before you catch your prince. That happens. But whether you kiss them now or you kiss them later, you're going to kiss them either way. So by waiting to do that, you're kind of just slowing down the process, right? If you have four toads to kiss before you meet your Prince Charming, you can kiss those four now or you can kiss them later. Does that make sense? Okay, because we all have like a certain amount of things that we need to learn while we're here on earth, you know, like our soul contract says like, these are the things that I'm going to learn and whether you learn them this way or that way with this person or this person is going to happen no matter what. That's just your destiny. And so they're saying, you know, be really confident right now in who you are. And, you know, it's okay to take some time back and really get your life organized and feel comfortable in being single. If that's not what you want to look for right now, then you're probably not watching the love reading. But, but they're like, you know, in loving yourself first and like having all of your ducks in a row, it does actually help you to attract somebody a little bit quicker um, just because you're likely trying to attract in somebody who's also like you who's neat, who's tidy, who's organized, things like that. Because, you know, for a Virgo who, um, you know, they say that you're perfectionist. So, um, you know, you like things done a certain way, okay? Um, to draw in somebody who's just like totally haphazard throwing their shit around, that wouldn't be a good match, right? So maybe they don't need to be as meticulous and attention and pay as much attention to detail as you do. Um, however, you're just not going to really match with somebody that's a polar opposite. You may attract to them, but in like that long-term scenario, eh. and that might be where you're at, right? Like if you're coupled, it's like, ah, oh, that attraction was so strong. And now 30 years later, my husband's not as handsome as he used to be. And like, I still like him, but like, it drives me fucking batty when he doesn't put his underwear in the laundry bin, he just throws them on the floor. You know, it's just as easy to throw it in a bin. Um, that kind of a thing. Okay, so is there anything else that Virgos need to know in the month of December? And they say, you know, that the earthly things need to be a little bit less of your priority this month, even though that's your kind of natural inclination and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you know, like your possessions, your job, um, organization, your car, career, that kind of a thing. They're like, take, pull your focus back a little bit and go a little bit more inside. Not so, so, so deep like a Scorpio or a Cancer might, but more um, just connection to spirit and asking for guidance and doing that little bit of mental work as to where can I shift my mindset and my perspective to put me on an even better path, like a better trajectory towards the things I do want, as opposed to living um, focused on the things that I don't. Now, the problem that I kind of see for you is like, where was I going with that? My mind was going a hundred places at once. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to give you an affirmation card. Virgos. What is our affirmation in December? We get integrity. I demonstrate the truth and honesty of my soul and I manifest love with every action. Okay. And then that actually brings me back to the thought that I was having. So it's actually a choice, right? Where we can keep moving through the story, right? Turning the pages and get to that happily ever after, to that happy ending of our story. Or we can keep rereading that same tragic story over and over, that same chapter. Now, sometimes there is beauty and tragedy, right? It makes us feel human. It makes us feel real to emote, okay? But if we keep reading that same chapter over and over, if we're not doing that Eight of Cups action and walking away from, you know, something that was good and it was beautiful in certain ways towards something better, 
then we're going to stay in that reality where it's like not quite good enough. It's not exactly what we want, where the, you know, the universe will give you everything you want. You just have to believe it. And so basically that's what I'm saying here. And so with this card, they're saying, um, I'm demonstrating truth and honesty of my soul. Like I need to accept this, that this is the truth. Yeah. And I'm going to manifest love into my every action. So everything that you're doing, like even when you're at work, you know, put love into it. If you're, if you're concerned about your finances, you know, when you pay your bills, love that you did it. Say, I love that I paid this bill on time this month in total. You know, even if you do it with just like the smaller ones, like, oh, this one's only 20 bucks, so I'll pay that, you know? And you get on your computer and you do that and you push that love out by nature, but like miracles happen. Like you're gonna attract more wealth into your life, okay? This, I do this all the time, and then I find like 20 bucks on the ground the next day. Things like that happen. and But you have to believe that with your soul. You have to manifest love into everything that you're doing. And so this is what they're saying, you know, when we're looking back at, um, what was that card? Where it was saying that, oh, the five, of the five of Cups, where he's looking at what he doesn't have. I don't have this soulmate relationship right now. I don't have the love that I desire. I don't have the love that I deserve. And he's just rereading that over and over and over and it makes him feel sadder and sadder and sadder. It's a downward spiral. Instead of turning around and looking at, wait, but this means that I'm not with the wrong person. You know, so you can give, express gratitude for that that you have, right? So I'm thankful that I have the ability to go out and meet the person of my dreams. I'm thankful that I didn't settle for less than what I desired. I'm thankful that everything that I want is available to me in like massive abundance. So that was a very law of attraction based reading, but maybe that's what you needed to hear in the month of December. So best of luck to you in love and in every other area of your life, love and light.